All right then. So um, yeah, guys, we've uh, um, we've 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 been we've been looking forward to to this one uh, quite a while. And uh, as soon as we asked him, is uh, it's it's very cool that he uh, he said yes straight away. So uh, Jonas, it's a big honor to uh, to have you over here. Uh, we are very impressed by you. By you, we already know you for quite a while now, and uh, uh, yeah, it's just a, a very, very good to uh, to share the stage together. Uh, everybody, uh, have fun today. If you have a question, if you have something to to ask to uh, to to join us himself, let us know. I think we can maybe use uh, at least after the session, maybe like 10, uh, 10 minutes or so for maybe a little uh, Q and A as we done uh, as we done before. But first, uh, let's do some 90 minutes of training with, uh, with, uh, with the superstar himself. Um, I'm going to do uh, the quick warm-up for 10 minutes. Then we're going over to Jonas for, uh, for a first combination. Uh, 10 times left, 10 times right. And he probably has some, some, some crazy exercises for us to do. We're going over to Darren, then going over to me. And we will be doing this for a few rounds. And then uh, in the last 10 minutes, go over to Mr. Stringer for doing some, uh, some stretching and then uh, a little Q&A. So, um, Anything to add, Darren? No, I mean, Jonas is uh, a very accomplished fighter, very young still. Uh, I remember Jonas when he was really young. And, you know, it just goes to show what hard work and dedication uh, can achieve because he was rubbish. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he's, he's, got very, he's, he's got a very good mentality and he's come a long way. And we're, we're really proud to have him on the show. And we're really proud to actually know him personally. So thank you very, very much, Jonas. It's a pleasure. Um, anything you'd like to say to everybody? Oh. Yeah, uh, firstly, just thank you to you two, Wesley and Sensei Darren. Uh, it's me, it's, I, I had one of these sessions with the, uh, a club in Chile, and I'm astonished that you keep up the training when you're locked down as you are. You know, we have had it easy here, and um, yeah, it's, it's really humbling and really motivating to see all these people, you know, training from their homes. and. Um, I hope I can bring you some motivation, maybe, or maybe some exercises you haven't done, or say maybe something, something new that will brighten up the day. Because uh, I, for me, I have only been in lockdown maybe two weeks when I was sick. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> I'll have the pleasure to move around society freely. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm truly honored and truly, yeah, it's, it's motivating to see that all these people are from home and training still and keeping up the good work. It's, yeah. I'm, I'm really proud of all of you. <laughs> it's it's a good it's great. Awesome. That's great. Thank you. All right then. So guys, we're gonna we're gonna start with a little warm-up. As you see, my assistants are here as well. Sensei Conchita, Senpai, Skylar, whoop whoop, and uh, <laughs> Uh, or maybe uh, Queen Elsa, uh, so she might freeze you all. Uh, but uh, let's have a let's have a, have a good warm up. So um, I'm hoping I am visible for everyone. Everybody can see you properly. Yeah, good. good. All right then. So what we're just gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna skip around a little bit, and every time I count, you make a deep squat and you come back. It's kind of like you're skipping uh, with with a rope there, but we obviously don't have a rope at, at the time. Do a little bit of a warm up every time I count. Make a squat. Ready? There we go. And and skip, 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 skip. me. Sun. G. Go. Rook. Six. Ash. Ooh. Yeah. I'm going to do the same, but now when I count, Make a squat, one, two, three, four, and back again. Ready? Good. Ish. One, two, three, four, and back again. Knee. Done. She. Oh. I got it. I got it. Good, thank you. Raku. Tish. Ash. Tish. 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 
All right, we're gonna add something else. One, one, two, three, four. So open up the shoulders and do this alternate. Also four times, ready? Yeah. Knee. Sun. She. Go. Look. Sesh. All right, shake the legs a little bit, twist in, and outside. And shake loose again. Hands on your hips, please. Twist them. And untie on the side. And shake loose. All right, so next exercise, what we're gonna do, right knee, left knee, right knee. Left knee four times for squats and then stand there. Move on my count. Itch, me, sun, she, itch, me, sun, she, and stay there. Us, ready? I should. Itch. And stand. Knee. Sun. Last one, last one. She. And stand. Good, so the last thing we're gonna do, instead of hisagiris, we're gonna make my giri, switch my giri, switch my giri, four times, a squat, 10 long punches, and stand there. We'll do this five times. Every time, the punches, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, good? Kick, squats, stay the same. Ready? Ish. Aisha. Me. Twenty punches. Thirty. Hey. Last one. Whoa. Aisha. Us. 
All right. So, slowly warmed up a little bit. Not fully warm, but good enough to go uh, over here for me, but maybe for you over there or over here <laughs> to the first question <laughs> by Jonas himself. Oh, so, uh, if you ever see me fight, you know I'm not uh, that complex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty basic, but I have a few faults or a lot of faults and uh, some of the combinations we're going to do today are things I do personally to try to correct my own faults, okay? So one of my big faults is when I fight, I tend to not punch but push. Blah, blah, blah. It's like I'm, I'm in water, you know, blah, blah, blah. You don't want to be like this, you want to be snappy. So. We're going to do an easy exercise. We're just going to do two straight punches. So from fighting stance with your lead, uh, lead, lead hand, punch, punch. But I want you to rotate your hip and your shoulder at the same time. I don't want you to be here and then just with the arm. I want you to punch with your whole body. So from here, punch, punch. And I want you to be snappy. And then I want you to return and then snap again, okay? Um, it's important also that you not too much weight, weight, your weight goes forward too much. Because it's not another problem of me, I get like this, forward. I want to have a nice upright torso, and when I punch, I punch my entire body. Okay, so just two punches, ten times, left hand, change, right stance, ten times, okay? So, my numbers. H. Ni Tan Shi Go Rup Sitch Hatch Ko Yo So change stance, relax a little bit. So try to relax your shoulder. You have, if you want to be fast, you have to be relaxed, but in a good position, okay? So right leg. Etch. Ni. Tan. Chi. Go. Rock. Stitch. Etch. Ko. Yo. Good. Yeah. So, relax. Awesome. Exercise. Exercise. Oh, me? Okay, good. Go. The first exercise we're going to do is one I really like. I try to do this at least two, maybe three times a week. And it's to stiffen the Achilles tendon. So the Achilles tendon, I, I, in my opinion, is one of the most important parts of our body when we're doing martial arts because we're generating force from the floor. So we have to have a stiff but reactive Achilles tendon. And the exercise, I think, is called in English pogo jumps. I'm not sure, but you, you jump with... You, do you see my legs? My legs straight with your arms like this, and you just flex your toes, your, your, your wrists, and you try to do it fast, okay? So you just, if you look at me from here, I'm straight, I find the bounce, and then I, on my toes, okay? I'll try to do it 10 times. Jonas. Jonas, do you want us to bring back the heel every time we land? No, we I want there? you to land on the balls of the feet. All so the you land, up. and then you back up, back up. And you want the contact time in the, in the ground to be as short as possible. So just... Bah, bah, bah. Yes. So, ten times. On your, on your own count. Yeah. Just one thing with that exercise. Excuse me, sorry, sorry, Sensei. Uh, one thing, don't overdo it. If you want to do it at home, be careful. Start with a few repetitions and don't overdo it because you can get tendonitis in your Achilles. So be a little bit careful. Yeah. So how many times do you do this? How many, no, when you do this, you do this two, three times a week. How many times you do this? Uh, if, if, if I have a plyometric session, I always start with this exercise. I do it maybe two to three times eight to 15 repetitions. I do it for quality. All my plyometrics is for quality, not for uh, 
volume. So two, two to three times, uh, eight to 15 repetitions. Or sometimes I also like to do it before sparring just to get the springiness in my feet. But then I maybe do one, two sets only. Cool. Very good tip. Use it, guys. Yes. Use it. One watch for free. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to lead off with Jonas's one, two with the double punch. Okay, so we're going to be there. One, two, a little switch inside and then a Gyaku ski afterwards, okay? Very important, as Jonas said, not too much movement in the body. Make sure we rotate in from the center line here when we're doing, same when we land in here. Try not to deviate the body weight too much each time, okay? Turn on the left, turn on the right, little exercise is down here for me to where's next. Okay, let's go, ready? Oi, oi, inside Gyaku, ready? After a good position of landing. Ready? same time. So uh, let me change the screen slightly here so you can see my legs. So you want to come up, touch, and then twist, and then touch the other one. So don't come up and touch them at the same time. Up, twist, down. One, two, down. Okay? What we're going to do is we're going to do 10 with the right hand touching first, and then 10 with the left hand, 20 in total. Look at that. All good, man. Excellent. Let's go. H. E. G. Left hand. H. Me. Sun. She. Go. Ruck. H. H. G. G. Up you get it. no hands, please, ma'ams. And down here for me to Wesley. You just have a quick drink if you want, and on to the next one. Good work, yeah. guys. If you want to have a quick drink, please they do it. Yeah. We are not old school Kikushin. Like in Japan, we did this, we did that. Six hours of training with no drinking. No good, no bueno. <laughs> Please, Plus, me and Wesley are old now, so we need the refreshments. Okay. <laughs> He's fit as hell. <laughs> we <are>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we, we are still going to use the double hand. And, and very important thing uh, Jonas said, please don't be like that, hanging over. Because if now you need to go inside, it's going to be rubbish. Yeah? Go one, two, really twist in the body. We made some extra effort there, yeah? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go forward, forward, skip, 
and now fake the punch we did with Darren and do a double Skaski. Yes, chest, inside, liver, liver, yeah? Chest, chest, inside, liver, liver, yeah? Good? Good to go? All right then. People, my people, there we go. Ready? Yeah. Knee. Done. Go. Roku. mistakes in because normally left hand will be lead we are always throwing this in a little bit chicken wing when we stand up, straight straight not this this when you stand over here and you fight Jonas bam 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 down yeah not good elbows low ten times on the right ready stop So, plyometric plank. Because Jonas has the body of a god, he can really do this properly. Please, guys, when we do this, be in a push up position. Over here. To be in a push up position, and we will use the same stance, but really try to be as straight as possible. Because we will only do 10. And you can choose to do shotai or saiken. Us, I don't mind. Some people have not really strong wrist. Try do over here. Some people have bad wrist when they land like this. Go to go there. Us, ready? Us. Us. On my time. Us, us, us. Me, san, shi. Go. Look. Fish. Ash. Go. Shit. Shit. And take it off. Take it off. Quick little drink. And over to the Swedish superstar. Okay, so we're going to continue with easy combinations, but yet it's very important. I mainly do very, very easy combinations. Uh, if anybody knows who's, who the Klitschko brothers are, they're famous for doing 12 weeks of training camp for the boxing fights and doing the jab. <laughs> and I have a similar philosophy. Try to be as good as possible with the basics and the rest will follow. So what we will do is just an easy overhand underhand with the same hand, okay? And we will try to think about the same things as we thought, uh, we thought about in the first combination. So we want to rotate 
But the difference now, we don't want to rotate forward. We want to rotate slightly down, slightly up. Okay, we're going to do an exercise afterwards, which uh, I like to do before, but now we do it afterwards. It's, it doesn't matter. But so what we're going to try to, to think about is once again, good stance. And when we punch, we want to rotate our hips, our, our knees, our hips, our shoulder down, and then back to starting position and up. We want to rotate slightly up and press from the floor up. Push. Also, did you see? Did you see my? Did you see me? I can do it one more time. So, one, two. So, close hip, open hip, and try to throw the arm diametrically. Don't. Okay, just fast. Okay, shoulder deliver. So, left leg forward. Good stance. Elbows in front, and then itch. Knee, up, speed, walk, rock, switch, touch, call, yo, go, relax, take loose a little bit, and then do other side, right leg forward, elbows in front. I itch, knee, sun, chi, walk, rock, sit, touch, call, yo. Yeah. So good. So for me personally, I have a little bit bad back or stiff back, back. So what I like to do before I do combinations like this is an easy warm up exercise. So what we do is we we'll stand in something like a kibbutz almost, knees out, toes forward, and just like you're holding a big, big platz ball, you rotate side to side. This is a common exercise, but when you rotate this side, uppercut, rotate. Uppercut, rotate uh, like an overhand punch and rotate overhand punch. More so mobility than anything else. So just relax. So rotate, 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 uppercut, rotate, uppercut, rotate, rotate, overhand. And then when you try, when you feel a little bit more comfortable, you do it fast and try to just move around in the lower back and try to just accentuate the movement so you get a good stretch throughout the core. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, three, one, two, three, three, one, two, 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 three, not so nice, so. Right, so um, we're, we're, we're still using uh, Jonas's um, first two techniques. One, two, remember, over and then up each time. So. What we're going to be one, two, migrate land, Jordan Mawashi. Okay, if you look, watch the way that Jonas fights, he's always pushing people back because he's so strong. So, so strong. You don't understand. <laughs> okay, so when he actually hits someone here, most of the time he's going to create space for himself. And then he can start to use the other things. This is where Jonas is saying he keeps the basics really good and then the rest will follow. So when he hits someone here, they feel the effect, then I'm going to chase up, bow them a little bit, bring their hands down, and then we're going to try and kick them in the head. Okay, so one, two, the same. Migrate, two down, step through as the person goes back, join our Mawashi in position. Try to relax, don't get all stiff, as Jonas has already said, nice, relaxed, sharp techniques, and the power will follow. Okay? 
10 on one side, 10 on the other, and then a little exercise, maybe not so nice, and then over to Wes. Okay, ready? Let's go. Ready? Edge! to work on the rotation still along with a little bit of a push forward you obviously wouldn't push this far forward when you're fighting but it is important that when we hit our body weight is always going forward although Jonas is saying stay neutral here you have to make sure that your power is always going this way regardless whether you're getting a beating by Jonas and going back or you're Jonas and going forward you still got to keep the power there Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the position on one leg. So we're going to be in a fighting stance. We're going to lean back and then drive through. As we lean back, we're going to really over-rotate. Unrealistic, but what normally happens, we practice at 100%. When we get on the mat, we start operating maybe around about 60%. And that's just nerves, tiredness, fatigue, all those kind of good stuff that we've all experienced on the mat. But you have to work, work, work all the time to a level that's going to even subtract the nerves and all that other stuff to still enable you to perform on the day. Okay? So we're going to over-rotate, in, push. We don't have to throw the technique, but what we're looking to do is making sure that we are rotating back. So we cushion here, push, and then drive that twist of rotation. Although we're going forward, please avoid doing this. Jonas said it very well. We're looking for a rotation here, not a lean. We're going to do six on the right, six on the left. Down to my buddy down here. He's going to follow up, change it, mix it up. Maybe add some spins in. I don't know. He's crazy. <laughs> okay, ready? So, let's go. Edge. Knee. Sun. She. Go. On the day, left leg takes the cushion. Ready? Edge. E. Sun. She. Go. Rock. Yeah. 
you said a quick little drink over to my man, Wesley, who's probably got lots of plans going around in his head right now. So, um, Sensei, I think I'm going to steal that exercise. I liked it a lot. Yeah, it was good. Welcome. Yeah. I, 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 I'm now, you know, regretting not bringing a notebook. I should have brought a notepad, notepad or something and just wrote it down. But I'll have to try to it remember. Up on YouTube, my friend. You can steal it anytime after. <laughs> <laughs> You can call it the KRT pushing for the cushion. <laughs> Push <in>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna mix it up a little bit now. So on we're gonna do nine of these uh, of these things. One, four, and seven will be a combination. Two, five, and eight will be a combination, and three, six, and nine will be a combination. Yeah. yeah? So in this way, all the time, you're going to stay with Jonas, leaving off the front arm, both the, the, the double arm, yeah? So on the one, it's going to be one, two, yeah? On the two, it's going to be one, two, twist in, low stomach punch, and over here, rotate knee to the face, yeah? Because you're in here. And you will bring the knee up over there, all the way around the shoulder, because we're pushing forward like our Jonas over here likes to do. Not so much, I gotta be over there, there, there. Push, 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 yeah? On three, it's gonna be one, two, forward. Yeah? I called it, I called it, I called it, guys. <laughs> One, bang, bang. Two, bang, 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 hey. Three, bang, 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 way shot. Yeah? Push. Got it. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Come on, day. Yeah. Now with the knee. Knee. Aisha. Yeah. Beautiful. One again. Four. Five. Six. Last three times. Seven. Eight. Nine. How You know the drill. Nine times. You gotta be easy. When you fight, always think about the guard, but you you can still be having your hands up there. Be relaxed in the upper body. Yeah? Good. Ready? Me. Sun. She. Go. Rogu. Shia. Last three. Aisha. So, what we're going to do, think about the movements we just did over there. In these punches, it's not only arm power, it's a lot more strength you're using over here, yeah? So, we're going to be in a plank, on my count, you bring your knee to the shoulder sideways, front all through the chest, and sideways next to the shoulder. This is count one. One, two, three, and stand there. Yeah. One, two, three. We only do eight of these. So four on the left, four on the right. Ready? Push. Good. Start with the right leg. Edge. Knee. Sun. 
Jonas, again. Yes. I'm having fun. A lot of fun. Me too. Yeah, it's good. Jonas, are you having fun? Yes, a lot. It's, yes. it's, it's nice to do when, when you take very something important. that's very basic for me <laughs> and you evolve it to something quite difficult. It's, it's a fun challenge for me because, yeah, I need some of these exercises. <laughs> <laughs> So we learn very from effective. each other. Always. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, sure, sure. Very effective. Very effective. So, um, uh, I don't know how much people watch uh, other fighters on YouTube or such, especially from other federations, but one of my main influences this, this lockdown or this uh, non-competing season has been Alexander Yeremenko, Yeremenko from uh, Ukraine, Russia, yeah, I don't really know about that. <laughs> but anyway, he's in Russia right now. And uh, what, what I've been watching him doing and what I've been trying to implement myself is small steps in my stance to open up my opponent. So usually, especially when you're facing Russians and you're usually facing Russians, <laughs> they, <are> very, <laughs> they have a good stance, right? And the, the problem is when you, they, they, they want to find inside position. So if my stance is here, they want to be inside of my stance and punch me to the, to the, to the solar plexus, usually. This is uh, Alexei Gorokhov. He, he does this a lot. If you ever watched him fight, he tries to get the inside position. So how do I mitigate this? How do I try to find a solution to this without only trying to find the inside position, which the Russians are good at finding? So what Yeremenka does is he takes... A small step to the side. When I take a small step to the side, if my opponent is like this, if I move to the side, my shoulder moves into the middle of him, his guard. You understand? My shoulder is at his, at his outside arm. When I move to the side, my shoulder moves between his arms. Okay? So what we're just going to do is still very simple. We're just going to move about 10 to 15 centimeters to the left, punch a straight punch from here, but I want my uh, back leg to be same position, so I lower myself a little bit from here, like almost going to a sacred statue, but not as wide of a stance, just punch, and when I punched here, I want to keep moving with this leg and follow up with my back leg, so I one, and then I move 45 degrees more to the side, and do the hook, okay? So the combination is like this, step, punch. I lower my center mat like this, punch, step to the side, hook, and I use my body. I don't punch like this. I use my entire body in a good position, boom, boom. And to the other side, same thing, step to the side, one, two, rotation, okay? For the, for the people who are, who are obviously training with us, so when we hit the hook, will we, will we go in front of the elbow or in the back of the elbow? So will we go for floating rib or will we go for liver in the shot? In, in this case, we want to go around because the, the person we are trying to punch is like this. So we go to the center line, punch him in the stomach, go around, punch him in, in the side. Okay. It's clear for everyone. Show me some thumbs. Good guys. Right. Nice. Awesome. So, 10 times. Left leg forward. Arms in front. What was the question? Yeah, she's asking, do you move the front leg twice? Effectively, yes. Yes, yes. So, uh, I'll, I'll move the, the, the front leg and, and keep the back leg at the same position and punch the first punch. And after this, I move a, a little bit more to the side and I follow with the other leg. So... Only left leg, left leg and right leg. Yeah, cool. Good? Good. Aisha. Okay, so left leg forward and itch and then back. Relax. 
Try to be as fast as possible. Knee. Son. Chi. Go. Rook. Sit. Hutch. Go. Yo. Good. Okay, relax. Move a little bit. And now we're going to the other side. So, step. One, two. I say. Knee. Sun. Shade. Go. Rock. Stitch. Hutch. Go. Yo. Yeah. Awesome. So, exercise now. So we're going to elaborate on the pogo jumps. So we're going to try to have the same foot position, but we're adding knees up. Usually when I do plyometric, I want the knees up because we're working hip flexion. So hip flexion is kicks and majority of kicks, all kicks that are in the front of going forwards are using hip flexion. So I want to make, uh, imitate that. So I usually do plyometrics with the knees up. So what we will do is we just find a bounce and then we will jump with our knees up, land on our toes and knees up. Okay, we will do two sets of six to eight repetitions. I want quality of movement over volume. I want nice tall jumps as high as possible, rest a little bit and then six to eight more. If you're feeling like you're down four and they start to turn to shit, don't do any more. You do plyometrics quality, nothing else. Okay? Good. So, on your own count, let's go. So, relax a little bit. As Sensei and Dan and Wesley said before, there's not, no shame in resting in training. We don't, we have learned a lot more since the 60s and 70s. We rest sometimes, so we get quality, okay? So we'll shake the legs out and we'll do six to eight quality. Okay, let's go. Good. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Done. Okay, great. Excellent. So, um, I, I actually use a, a very similar movement myself. Uh, I like to peel off to the side, so it actually suits me really good, what Jonas has done. <laughs> um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to peel off here, create the space around. Now, what's going to happen, person's elbows are going to come in, it's going to create this lovely area around here, which Jonas has now made available to him by the movement through to the solar plexus. Here, then they're going to come around here, and it, one or two things is going to happen. Either this, his elbows are going to move again, but then what I like to do, and, and Jonas takes advantage of good shit and wash Gary's through hurting people as well, is we're going to come one, two, and then cut straight across the body. Straight across the body. Now, in case we're going to hit all the way across the front of the body, not to the side on the liver or the spleen, but right across those central stomach muscles. So what's going to happen is hopefully we're going to Hit him nice and low, no higher than just above the belt. Now, okay, what you need to appreciate is people are always working these strong muscles around the top half of the torso because that's where most people get winded because that's where the solar plexus are. But then what happens is people's muscles start to deplete lower down. So, and we're going to really take advantage of that, cutting nice and low so we're going to be able to bend that body as we cut through. Okay, one, two, and then cut through. Look up a little bit, raise the arm, make it think it's coming drawdown, cut nice and low right across that body. Okay, then we're going to get the full shin all the way across. Okay, we've got 10 on the right, 10 on the left, right leg kicking, I mean, left leg forward, little exercise, and then we're going down to Wesley. 
Okay? Ready? Let's go. rotation, coming back on that Shudo Morashi. Try not to just be here, and then we're just relying on this hip flexor stroke muscle strength. Always about using your body. Me, Wesley, and actually Jonas were never the biggest to start off with. Jonas got big later. <laughs> <laughs> Always have to think about your body. Use your body to the best of your ability. Okay, ready? Let's go, ready? movement. It's a very important muscle that is here. It's muscle twitch movement along with obviously the push off of the ground. You can't just rely here and then if this bit's not firing you get a slow delay kick no matter how good your push off is. So it's great practice in this because you get a great push off of the ground but then you need to make sure that you're complementing the push and the hip flexor here. Okay otherwise it's really no good. So, I always like to use my man Usain Bolt because we're pretty much the same speed, etc. <laughs> same height, you know, we're just like twins. Okay, so from here, we're gonna push off of the ground. And you can, you can have a wall or something if, if it helps you out. Okay, we're gonna push, and then we're just gonna drive this leg forward. Just a little bit, you don't have to take it all the way here because it's the first movements that we're looking to imitate at the kick. And without success in early stages, doesn't matter how good your kick will end up being, if you can't bridge that gap, you'll never hit the person. You know, as strong and as good as Jonas is, there's, there's no point in throwing techniques if the person's gone. You know, we have to, we have to bridge this gap very quickly. Okay, so we're gonna be here on the ground, <clears throat> Just really drive this hip forward so you can feel that hip flexor working, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to do five on the right, five on the left. Do be careful because we don't want you pulling any muscles, etc. but hopefully we're fairly warm now, okay? Push and drive that knee forward. Okay, ready? Out! And back down. Same leg, right leg again. Knee! Right leg again. Sun. And again. She. Good. Last one on this leg. Cow. Yeah. Nicely done. Other leg. Let's get down nice and low. Now this is normally people's weak leg, the left leg. So please concentrate not only on coming up, but pushing this hip forward. Because when we do the kick, we want to be able to open up and drive that power forward, okay? Right, let's go. Ready? Edge! 
So a quick drink over to Wesley. Remember, you can't maintain high repetition intensity for a really long time. You have to practice it, of course. You can't expect to be able to do those high intensity movements for hours and hours and hours. You have to build up to that, first of all, but <laughs> it doesn't come easy, believe me. <laughs> okay, over to Wes. Yeah, so as Darren said, Jonas grew big. So what, what you guys see in your screen right now, if you look at Darren, it's the incoming package of IKEA. <laughs> and you can see, I'm halfway through, and there's your big closet. Yeah? <laughs> All the way there. <laughs> so, <laughs> actually, this, this really suits me as well. So um, I'm very glad. We, we, I think we all know Yeremenko. He's an amazing fighter. We have... We have had a session with uh, with with Matt Max, the, the one he's he's teaching, he gets teached by, and uh, this was an amazing class. And there you see the little things Jonas is also interpreting into his uh, into his fighting style. So that's very good. So we're going for a uh, for a knockout right now, and we're gonna go for a, a double punch to the solar plexus. I always like to go double to the solar plexus. If, if you got the strength of Jonas, you really punch the solar plexus, this, this is really going to take the wind out of the fighter. But if you use a little bit less strength or you're maybe a, a little less stronger, you maybe have to tap the same, <laughs> the same spot for, for two or three times before it has the same, it has the same effect. So what we're going to do, we're going to still lead off the right punch. So putting the left leg into the side, right punch, left punch, both to the plexus, plexus, plexus. So um, let, me, let me just show you guys right now. As I'm, as I'm over here, I'm leaving out one, really twist my body back into there, go all the way with the same hook we just used. And when I hit over here, this uh, arm will probably go down so I can go uchi mawashi to the side. So I'm gonna hit, hit, break the elbow away, and really knock the person out. As we said, I'm not always the strongest. I am trying to be the smartest, and that is that is the, that really suits my style of fighting. If you combine all of these things, you're going to be a murderer, like this one over there. Yeah, good. Ten on the left, ten on the right. Let me do. Uh, let me do the slowly for all you guys. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. Yeah? yeah? Think about it. One, two, three, four. Over there. Yeah? Push. There we go. Ten on the left, ten on the right. If you can't do go then, practice chu then. If you can't practice this chu then, practice gay then. You really want to have the little twist in there. Yeah? Push. Ten times. Ready? Ish. Me. Sun. She. Go. Roku. Say. Uno más, uno más. Yeah. 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 Good. Mawate. Step outside with the right leg. Go in. Twist your body. One, two. Yeah? Yeah. Ready? Knee. 
done. She. Go. Rupu. Oh. Stitch. Ash. Cool. Last one, people. Yes. Good, 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 good. Very good. Did you enjoy the time, people? Okay. So, as we said before, the hip flexors is very, very, very important. Also, when we train, a lot of our tensor and hip flexor will burn up quite easy. And why is this? Because this is a lot of heart muscle tissue. So it's white tissue instead of red tissue. There's not a lot of blood flow in there. So we really have to train this very well. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna kind of use the same thing as we did with, with Jonas, but now we're going to be over there from this position, jump up and really try to bring your knees out to the shoulders as much as possible, yeah? Think about this is a really, really explosive technique. So please be careful on doing this, but it's very important to be in a low position and from that low plus position explode into the air. Only doing six today, just for the feeling. And you guys can obviously take this away to your home where you are right now and train this during your session. Yeah? So stand over here. Give it at you, please. And bring your arms into the center. Over here, try jump as high as possible, but sensible. Yeah? Push. Think about hips are open, not closed. Yeah? Hips are open. Ready? Ish. Try in one movement, keep the, the, the legs bent while we jump. Knee. Push. Yes. Sun. She go hollow back, hollow back, hollow back. Last one. Roku Aisha. Take loose because you're really burning there. Yeah? If you do this properly. Quick little drink over to Jonas again for I think probably the last combination set. Awesome. Yeah? So one more by you, stringer, myself, then back to stringer for some stretching. Winner, winner. Everybody okay so far, we hope. It's good. We are. <laughs> Dandy. <laughs> enjoying himself, so that's really good. <laughs> he was showing me double thumbs. <laughs> yeah. <baby. laughs> right. Whenever you're ready, big man. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to steal an idea from Wesley and doing uh, quite some different combinations, but similar. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a base combination and we're going to build on it like Wesley did. So uh, I'm, I'm going to keep stealing from other people because you take the best from other people and you get somewhat good. So Ivan Tumashev or anyone from IFK, Yekaterinburg, uh, Andrei, Shian Andrei Bura, they do a lot of jumping in and out, okay? So they jump in, bam, bam, they jump out, they break the, break the distance or they break the tempo, and then they uh, fastly move in again. So what we're going to do is, we're going to start with the base combination. So move forwards, two punches, jump back, jump forwards again with the left hand, okay? The reason why we're doing the left hand is because most people do the right hand, and most people are left, uh, have the left leg forward in the fighting stance. So they're more open with your left punch than your right punch because the left hand is forwards, which means it's faster to block with. It's closer to the right hand. So what we're going to do is forwards, one, two, backwards, fast, 
left hand. That's the first combination. Second combination, we're going to change the left hand to a Maigiri. If you're a good quick kicker like Wesley there, you can probably do this from the front leg and it's perfect. I'm not a good kicker, I do it from the back leg. <laughs> so, you're going to jump in, one, two, make distance, and now we're not going to jump in because we're, the legs are longer than the arms. So we're just going to jump in, jump back, my get. Okay? And then, for the last one, we're going to jump forward, one, two, back out, faint the, the my get in, and like my trainer, Dimitri Saveri, he does this very good, Alexander Dross, his pupil, does it very good. You want to show the whole feet, foot to the person like this. If, if this is my foot, you want to straight up in the face of, of the opponent. Make them react, open up their torso, and punch them. So, you go forward, one, two, backwards, leg up. My knee touches my shoulder almost. So, I really show my, my big ass foot, it straight in their face, baby. Step down, punch in a good position. Okay? So, combination one, one, two, punch. Combination two, one, two, back, my giddy. Combination three, one, two, back, faint the my giddy, punch with the right hand. Okay? Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so, and we'll do like Wesley, nine, not ten. Okay? So, firstly, one, two, left hand. Inch. Okay, now my get knee. And now faint my get it. Chula Yakuski. Stop. Good. Okay, relax. And then once again. Etch. Knee. Sun. And then last three. Knee. And some. Okay, good. Change legs. Left leg forward. I itch. Knee. Sun. And again, from the beginning. Itch. Knee. Sun. And last one. Itch. Knee. Sun. Also, okay. So now. I am also going to be a little bit mean. I'm going to do an exercise I'm like, I like to call the dying dead bug, okay? So people have usually done some variation of this exercise, which I think you call in English dead bug, where you lie like this, you extend one arm, one leg, or maybe contralateral, like this. But what we're going to do, we're going to do it a little bit more dynamic. So we're going to lay, lay like this, and we're going to shift our hips and move around in a circle. When you complete the one circle, you go to the other side. What's important here is flexion in the torso and rotation of the hips and the shoulders, just like punching. Okay? We want to flex your um, torso, contralaterally rotate, go back down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Really awesome. working the rotation, okay? Awesome. So I'm going to really mean to you. I'm going to make you do three on each side. So one side, the other side. That's one. One, one, two. And you'll do three, okay? It's, it, it, it will burn, especially if you're not used to this exercise, okay? Three on each side. Let's go. Ah, <laughs> 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 
Nicely done. Ah, I gotta get yourself a really quick drink, and then we'll. Some of them are, are still busy. Hmm? Please take your time, people. Oh, really, sorry. take your time to finish it. Don't yeah, go it's quick. Not, it's a difficult movement to do. I'm a little bit. It is. Yeah. I, I, I use that quite a lot on a straight line, trying to wiggle up the dojo, and yeah. most people have, have really difficult understanding of the body mechanics to make it happen. <laughs> but but uh, once you get it, you you really start to benefit in that torso area, as uh, as Jonas is saying, because it really makes it work and it burns consistently, and it's it's a really good movement to use, like you use your punches. So it's it's uh, it's very similar. So if, I, I would recommend this uh, a, a lot. I, I, I teach a lot of kids, and for the kids to to learn how to rotate properly with the hips and the shoulders and everything, I like this exercise a lot because when the yeah. kids get this exercise they usually get how to rotate with an upright torso so for all of you who teach kids learn yourself this movement and then teach the kids and they'll yes. have an easier time learning how to rotate properly yes so before we go to darren please guys if you have a question and when you when you when you thought about this question or or, or would like to ask a question to join us at the end of the session please think about it right now because we don't want to take too much of his time. It's an honor for us again for him to be here. I have all, all afternoon, so just as many oh, questions as you need. <laughs> as you want, I have time. It's no problem. Looked out for him. Um, he's, he's, he's in a different day. <laughs> we uh, do we still have time for combinations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. I was just I was just saying to the people that. The, for, for for them to think about a question, if you this is now the time and it's it's now easy to to, yeah. to be in touch with Jonas. He knows a lot about fighting. He knows a lot about his body. Uh, he he really trains with a, with a, with a, with a vision to 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 get to where he wants to be. So please, guys, take 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 your time and take your moment to really ask him the questions. Yeah, and he's had the fortune um, to train with a lot of good people as well. So as he says, he keeps taking ideas from people, which is, is, is great for everybody. Okay. Right. So, um, let, let's, let's, let's whisk through this. Um, we're going to use, um, one, two, and the last bit here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that combination exactly as it exists for the first one, for the second one and the third one, we're going to change it ever so slightly. So I'm going to stick on the same thing. One, four, and uh, or oh, crikey, uh, six or seven rather will be one. I know we're going to count. <laughs> two, two, five, and eight, and then three, six, and nine will be uh, will be different combinations. Okay, so we're coming in one, two. Uh, I want us to step forward this time to then take the gyaku rather than driving through this way. So that's the only subtle difference. First one is there. One, two, three, and hit to the solar plexus. Second combination, one, two, three, hit, and an Ishiro Mawashi, because we like that here, <laughs> mainly because of Wesley. And the third one, what we're going to do is we're going to try to be a little bit more ambitious here. And we're going to go in one, two, three, in, round, and then we're going to lead around with a Mawashi instead of the Ishiro Mawashi. What happens? Wesley comes along and he does this, and the guy goes, "Woo! I don't want none of this, bad boy." Yeah. So what we're going to do is come through and then chase him with the Mawashi at the end. Okay. So just a quick recap: one, two, in, three. That's number one. One, two, up, hit, is your Mawashi. Number two, one, two, up, hit, around, and the Mawashi Gary instead of the Ishiro Mawashi. On the third one, okay. In the interest of time, to give Wesley some time, let's just do six. Okay, oh. not running out of time. Just six. So two sets through on each leg. Okay, right. We're all good. Ready? Now the issue. Now spin and take the washi afterwards. Sun. Good, good. Back to the original. Gyaku only. Ishiro Mawashi. Good, good. 
and the Moshi to finish. Sun! Shia! Good! Let's go on to the other leg. One, two, three, in. One, two, three, in. It's strong Moshi. Then coming through the left leg Moshi to finish with. Two sets. Okay, ready? Let's go. push-ups and we're concentrating on the core okay so we've done it before we're going to be in position we're going to come down make sure that we touch here over rotate over rotate so we don't have to bend the arm what you do have to do is a really long movement try to get to the forearm and then really open up, keep that nice straight movement on the push-up. So the plank is strong, really good rotation in the core, so you can really rip through some of them punches. Okay? Six on one side, six on the other. Over to Wesley to finish off with. Okay, ready? Okay, open, edge. Knee. Sun. She. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Change on. Ready? Pitch. She. And up you come. Obviously, the stronger you get, you can get a bit more flex in the arm. Try to make it all that way down to the wrist. Works your core a little bit more, but start off with a straight arm first. Over to Wes. All right, then. Ending. The last, last combination, we'll, we'll stick to six as well, as we did with Darren. And we're going to uh, just slightly change the combinations, yeah? Because... What we did, okay, yeah. So what we did before was one, two, really bring this up, really bring this up, and then go to the stomach. What's even harder to the stomach than the fist? You're guessing it right, the foot. So we're going to one, two, bang, really drive in the maigiri to the low part of the stomach. Listen, guys, you can probably only do this once during a fight or maybe even a tournament, because this trick is, don't try to do this over and over and over again, yeah? But you can really use this to drive your opponent back, yeah? So on the one and the four, it's gonna be one, two, up, up, and really drive him down, yeah? On two and uh, on five, we're going to be one, two, bring it up, and all the way over there, when we go down, one, two, one, punch. When we punch, soto kakato. You're punch. over there, open up on your opponent, yeah? Punch. And then, on the last, we really want to get in close. One, two, three, four. And jump the knee, really punch. Punch to your opponent's stomach and really hit punch. at a straight line. To the chin because this will happen this will happen in theory and you will open up the chin only six of these yeah good ready awesome. 
Shit! Space! Yeah. And there we go. Done! Aisha! Good. Don't make it a round knee, straight knee. I'm going one, two, and there we go. And again, really use the hip flexors. One more time. Push it. Aisha. 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 Last one. Sun. Aisha. Good. Push. Hard one. Don't have a lot of time. Other side. Us. One more time. Slow. One, two, up. Stomach. Us. Us. Stand one. One, two, up. Punch. And really all the way outside. Third one. One, two, up. <laughs> Over there to the, to the chin. Us. Ready. Us. Finish. Nice. Knee. And sun. Good. Last three. Edge. Knee. Sun. Aisha. Good. All right. In sake of time, we leave the exercises out for an hour and we go to a little bit of stretching. But please, guys, I know the last thing I did was hard. Maybe the last thing we did with Darren was hard and the last thing we did with Jonas was hard. But you have to be good in your basics to really bring anything else into your fighting vocabulary, yeah? So thanks again. A little bit of stretching by Darren. And then it's time for a little Q&A, yeah? Good. Okay, let's go, let's have a, have a little stretch. Remember, you can do your exercises that you missed out on ways later on. <laughs> Don't treat yourself. Okay. <laughs> right, let's, um, let's just relax down, open up them knees. We've used the hip flexors quite a lot. So let's just try and relax them to start off with. Okay, from there, try to straighten your leg. Don't, don't move the stance. Normally, we're looking for a much wider position when we go into the four and one. So bring your foot off the ground, but try to shift your hip around this way a little bit. So rather than where we would normally be opening up here, what I want you to do is shift around and close the hip so that you feel the stretch on the hamstring a little bit more where we're leaning towards the leg. Jonas, so this is always the trouble. When we do this next to Baron, we look like idiots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know how I have to feel when you're doing all your combinations, you know. <laughs> Uh, to the center, open up the hips, and then we'll go to the other side in a minute. And rotate through. Back to the center again. Open up those flexors. Yeah. 
This time when we go through, try to bring the knee through the center line here. So rather than it being on the outside, bring it through. So we're starting to use the, the lower back as well on both sides and straighten down. Back to the centre, relax nice. from the middle. Same on the other side, remember, bring that knee on the inside of the arm. And come through. And back to the center. Okay, we've got one more on each side. Now this time, try to bring, as you, as you come to the outside, try to bring them nice and close together. Now I personally, I feel this behind my knee more because I'm, I'm, I'm less flexible behind my knee than in my actual hamstring. So try to bring this really close, pinch them together. You should feel a good stretch on the Achilles as well, which is, is nice, but do be careful with that. And each time, try to squeeze the knee in towards the other leg, okay? So let's go in, squeeze this in. Nice and straight on this right leg or left leg. Don't want to lose the stretch. Might have to come up maybe a little bit or something to ease the stretch off, but try to pinch the knees as close together as possible. And back to the center. And one more time on the other side. That's right. And we're done and dusted. Other side, change in, pinch that in nice and close. And by still trying to stretch down towards the foot where possible. Five. Four, three, two, one. Back to the center. Just straighten your legs and relax that back down to finish off with. And we come. Oh, just rotate. Itch, knee, sun, chi, go. And two really big ones. Itch. And knee. One day away. Itch, knee, sun, she. Go. And two really big ones. Itch. And knee. And we're done. We're done, people. So Saturday, first guest of the year. We've been we've been a little bit um shy on the guests because we, we ran out of friends basically to ask so <laughs> we made some more obviously uh, no no um we, we're looking to hopefully have a guest a month rather than every single week like we did at, at one point it was a, a super session really enjoyed it with jonas um and he really you know take take real good notes from this because it, it, it it's absolutely true if your fundamentals and your basics aren't on point everything else is great doing all the kicks that we see in cobra kai but first you've got to do kyokushin kai and that is full of basics, hard punches, hard kicks from the floor upwards. And then you can start doing the jumping, spinning back kicks that Wesley makes us do. <laughs> okay. But um, super, super session. Thank you very, very much, uh, Jonas, for giving us your time and uh, your knowledge. He has, like I said, he's trained with a lot of good people. So he's got a lot of good habits and he's still very strict on his bad habits. And that is a valuable asset to have on ourselves, people. None of us are perfect. Everybody has faults. And it's about finding ways to train those faults up. Okay? Good work, guys. Super stuff. Yeah.
Before we go to Jonas, I, uh, from out of my, my perception, I really, really want to thank you as well, Jonas, for, for being here. For, 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 for Darren and myself as KRT, we are very, very proud to have you on. It's, uh, it, it really was a big privilege. You're young, you're a big champ, uh, but you're even a bigger human. Uh, so thank you, thank you for being you. And something I'd like to, 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 to say to all of, all of you, um, one, of the, one of the best things about Jonas indeed is that he's very, very critical on his, on, on, his, on, his, on his own fight, on his own. He really looks at himself, hey, what am I doing wrong here and how am I going to get better? And only in, in this way, guys, you're going to really get better. It's, it's very cool to do flippity flappity kicks like we do, but you have to do tricks. It's very, very strict on your, uh, on, your, on your basics, on your, on, your, on your basic elements, and then, then you can really go, uh, go, go, uh, go a far away. Big thanks again. If you have a question, use it and, and type it out. And before we go to the Q&A, Jonas, do you have some words for us all? Yes, uh, as two wise men said before, <laughs> 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 it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an honor, it's a privilege. Um, and as you said before, for me, uh, uh, when I when I was young, I looked up to fighters like uh, Kasumi and uh, Dimitrov and people that are really, you know, the fundamentals are like what, what have got them to the dance and kept them at the dance, so to speak. And uh, you have to look at yourself as also like w Wesley and Darren. They are great kickers. They have like a, an arsenal. They, they they are exciting fighters to watch. Uh, myself maybe maybe not so much because it's it's not me it's not my style it's not my my body isn't meant to that, that that's what isn't what i'm best at and you have to find what you are best at and you have to refine it as well as trying to work on your weaknesses um like for me me for instance i've done a lot of uh, basic training this year like strength training running and stuff like that because it's been pre-season but you can't have pre-season for a year so I have evaluated what I've done this year and I've come to the conclusion that I've done too much other training besides Kyokushin and karate and, you know, all of this. So for me now, I, I will change my training because I, I think I've gone too much on to, uh, towards the strength and the conditioning side just because it has been pre-season for so long. And I think it's important to evaluate constantly how you're training and try to try to be critical but not in a bad way i i have some students of mine myself they're down in the gym right now so i can speak freely <laughs> but they are they are very good at criticizing themselves and they criticize themselves in a bad way if you have if you if you're going to be critical of yourself like for me for instance i don't have a coach living here i i, I meet my coach maybe once twice a year last year i only met him once and this year i hope i'll have to, I have the pressure to meet him at least once, but uh, you have to be you have to be a critic of yourself in a good way. You cannot go down on yourself. You can't be ha too hard on yourself. You have to be realistic and you have to be manageable in the way you cr criticize yourself. You have to see your your weaknesses and as well as your strengths and try to identify what you're going to train at. You cannot train all of your weaknesses. You cannot train all of your strengths. You have to prioritize. And you have to do it being nice to yourself. You cannot go too hard on yourself because I see a lot of teenage kids, they try to be perfect. They try to, you know, be good at school, be good at this, be good at that. You cannot do everything at once. It, it's, it's not manageable. You have, to, you have to try to, you know, space it out and try to be nice to yourself because if there's one person you're going to speak to for the rest of your life, it's yourself. <laughs> you cannot, you know speak bad to yourself and call yourself names. And uh, I don't know what people do when they speak to themselves, but uh, you, you have to be, you know, you, you have to be reasonable about it. And you have to, if you're your own critic, you have to be it in, an, in, in a nice way. Okay. If, if, if you wouldn't say those words that you're saying to yourself, to your friend, don't say it to yourself. Okay. Because um, it's, it's not good. It, it will, it will be very hard for you to train on your own and be critic critiquing yourself too hard it's it's, um, it's 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 not a good a good mix okay so i just wanted to say that because it's something i've thought about a lot and i'm trying to to, to say to my to my students as well that um, it's good to be your own critic 
and uh, good to evaluate yourself, but you have to see the strengths, you have to see the weaknesses, you have to be realistic about it. You cannot be too hard on yourself. So that was just what I wanted to say. Before we go to the questions, because I saw, uh, I saw already two questions, very, very interesting questions. I would like to, to add something to this, because in Kyokushin, when you say, I'm going to be the best, you're going to be very, they call you cocky, they will call you arrogant, and they will, a lot of people will think something about this, because you always have to be humble, and yada, 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 yada. But please, guys, and, and this is some, these are words of wisdom, Jonas is speaking here. Surround, you, surround yourself with people who believe in you. Surround yourself and, 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 and even believe in yourself. Um, maybe he's not the best role model for a lot of people uh, in the way he acts and his whole rich lifestyle and, and stuff like that. But if you look at Conor McGregor, he really, really believes in himself. And he surrounds himself with people who believe in him. And at that stage, you're going to go all the way, all the way, all the way. And us three all, we always believed in ourselves. And, and, I, and I can speak for myself. I'm, I, me and Darren, we have been doing so many things together and we're training together. And that's when we're training for something, we believe in each other. And that's, that's the friendship you're looking for. You have to believe in yourself. You, you, you can be a little bit arrogant. You can be a little bit cocky to yourself. S stand for the mirror, say to yourself, I'm going to be the best at what I'm doing today. Don't talk yourself down because then you're going to talk yourself into very depressive states and then there's there's going to be a, a moment you're not going to like training anymore and and please guys there's so much talent around please 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 take it out there like 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 our friend Jonas did because he, he truly is a, a big talent who works very 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 hard first question Darren you're going to take this the question by Janine yeah I can take it uh, it's from uh, Janine how old were you when you started karate and why did you start uh, so when I started, I was seven years old. Uh, I started because my father, who, which is the dojo I train in right now, he's the head instructor. He had done karate when he was younger. Uh, his friend, uh, you know him, Shane Robert. Uh, they were friends when they were growing up. Uh, his another friend of his had his kids training with Shian, and uh, so they asked if I wanted to come train. And I started training when I was seven in the summertime. And uh, at that time, I was doing soccer or football. I don't know what you say. Football. Yeah, football. And uh, uh, swimming. But uh, pretty fast, maybe a half a year later, I only did karate. I don't, it was the only sport for me that was fun, you know. And since, since I was like eight, I have only been doing this sport, <laughs> which has its bad sides and its good sides. But that's, that's my story, so to speak. Thank you. And there is a question. You are wearing an Olympic Swedish t-shirt. T-shirt. Is there a story behind this? Uh, I, I bought it. <laughs> That's a <laughs> story. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> Damon maybe thought you were in the in the Olympic Swedish team. He was. He yeah. was no, no, I don't. We, we don't have those resources for Russian players. No. <laughs> Next question, um, do, 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 do. Jonas, you are a forward fighter and won a lot, uh, won a lot of fight by fighting like that. Do you change your style or update it? That's from uh, Sense. Yes. Uh, so uh, it has its positives and negatives as well. Uh, this this style, um, this last uh, World Championships in uh, in Kazakhstan, I met a fighter from Kuwait something like this and uh, I lost uh, because I only did this if I were more clever in my fighting I would have probably won because after this fight he wasn't able to compete anymore because of injuries and uh, it, it has its downsides and I, I, I try to, to, to always evolve my style evolve my, my, my view uh, how I fight as well as I have to consider what are my strengths, what are my weaknesses, how am I going to, to win? I cannot, I, I, I am not Darren Stringer, I'm not Wesley Jensen, I cannot do this, this style of fighting. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, this is something I'm currently working a lot on. It's not only more moving forward, it's not only relying on strength and power, it's not only relying on good uh, conditioning, it's, it's relying more on technique, uh, brain, and all this. But my main problem with doing this is that I'm not confident in, in doing it. I have done one thing my entire life, 
when I fight, it's like you said earlier, the, the session, it's 60%. For me, it's maybe 40%. I get so nervous. I get so, so tense. So, you know, yeah, I, I, I don't, it's not the best Jonas you get to see on the tatami. It's like how I train is not how I fight because I don't, my psyche, it's not strong enough to right now to perform at that level. And I think that will be the key for me moving forward in these last three, four years of my career when I try to get more titles uh, is I have to unlock this. I have to start uh, being able to uh, perform at the level I'm training at, at the tatami. That's the biggest challenge for me. And also by doing so, I think my style will, will really, you know, open up and people will, will get to see see more exciting fighting and more more a, a better version of me but i think the key is here it's not maybe in the muscles <laughs> or in the technical training it's just i have to start develop that part <laughs> thank you thank you for your honesty and and this this really um your a lot of people look up to you and when when you when you open up like this uh this will probably gain a lot of respect by younger people older people who also look up to you uh before we go into the next question by frederick i i i have a question myself for you have you thought about going to a sports psychic uh like a physic uh how do you call this uh psychological uh yeah for, for, for yes I, I have talked to, to some people I know that are in this field and stuff like this, but uh, I think the biggest problem for me is it's, it's, it's not, I, I, I can perform under pressure. I can do all these things. For me, it's experience on the mat because um, where I live, it's in the, not the no, most Northern part, but Darren has been here. It's, it's quite far North and okay. tournaments in Sweden are not that common or they're maybe none <laughs> so mm -hmm. i have to travel abroad all the time to to compete and i've done that since i was eight years old my first tournament was in denmark it wasn't even in sweden so um uh, for me it's it's a lack of experience on the mat i think and it's a lack of experience prior to a big tournament i think what i have to start doing is ha have a big tournament and have a small tournament before where it's like a dress rehearsal where i go through it everything i i try to really take it seriously and try, try to do the things I want to do. And then I, I go compete maybe eight weeks, 10 weeks later when, yeah. So, but it's, it's really difficult to find these tournaments. I, I, I'm so jealous of people living in Japan or, or Russia where they have great tournaments every other weekend, you know, and they, they, they can really, you know, train the skill of competing. Uh, competing is a skill. Uh, it's, it's something you should train on a regular basis in the dojo, uh, in, in games and stuff. But it's also a thing you have to train the nerves, the, uh, how you wake up, what you eat for breakfast, how you warm up, how you wait for fights. Everything like this, it's, it's a skill. And uh, you have to do it constantly. Uh, I, I truly be believe in ring rust. Some people don't believe in ring rust. For me, it's a, as true as, every, uh, as one plus one. And for me, it's, it's very important. So... I have to try to now when everything opens up, try to find smaller tournaments, get the hang of it again, and then try to fight in bigger tournaments. I think this is the key for me. But yeah, I, I probably should go to someone, but it's hard to find someone you trust. Yeah. Um, so there was a question by Frederick. Um, how do you distribute your training between uh, a percentage of Kyokushin and, and karate stuff? percentage of weight, a percentage of cross training or any other Budo sports? Yeah. So uh, uh, my training schedule right now, it's pretty simple. I, I train Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, rest Friday, train Saturday, Sunday and rest Monday. So I have two rest days and five uh, active days. On Tuesdays, I start with light, light running on, on, my, on my lunch at work. I run for 30 to 35 minutes around six, seven kilometers, just easy run, get the blood moving and uh, start the training week. In the afternoon, I'll go get my training plan. Wait, one second. <clears throat> like a mini podcast. Over I don't want to say anything wrong. I'll, I'll just read it from the paper. <laughs> so, 
making notes. He's like, well, I, I told you to do this and you're not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Tuesdays in, in the karate training, we're doing uh, plyometrics slash strength for the upper body. Uh, we will work in pairs in different scenarios and different combinations. So we work two, two and two in, in, in sparring, but we're doing fixed combinations or fixed scenarios. Maybe one person is trying to fight as a counter fighter. One person is trying to fight as more of a tempo fighter. Maybe one person, we have a smaller ring and one person is trying to move a lot. And one person is more stationary. We have different scenarios. We work Tuesdays. After this, we do uh, the big mitts. So we have, uh, you know, pads with, on the body and on the legs. And we work um, uh, approximately the same time frame as a fight. So we work high intensity in uh, big mitts for a few minutes, uh, like a fight. And then uh, we do some stretching and uh, your own techniques and stuff like this. We do this every week, uh, or every training. Every training we do uh, uh, either strength, stretching, or uh, you have some favorite techniques you want to train extra. We do this maybe last 20, 50 minutes of every session. You have your own responsibility to do the things you need. Okay? So that's how we structure our trainings. Uh, Wednesdays, I do strength training. Uh, so I, I have a gym, maybe five minutes by bike from where I work. I rush there to strength training for 30, 40 minutes, rush back. And then I keep working. Uh, and in the evening, we do sparring, a lot of sparring. Wednesday are sparring days for us. It's pretty early in the training week. We haven't done as uh, not very, very hard session in, on the Tuesday. So we are pretty fresh. And depending on what time of the season we're in, uh, we'll do different styles. Now in the preseason, we'll do more volume fighting, more, more rounds. As we get closer to the fight, we do less rounds, but more intensively. Okay, but now as the preseason has been so long, we are, we are starting to sprinkle in some more uh, preparation training, e even though it's preseason. Uh, yes, and then Thursdays uh, I do running again. If I'm feeling fresh, I have a watch. I see how much I sleep, how much my recovery is. If I feel fresh, I'll do some interval training in the running in the on the lunch break. Otherwise, I'll do uh, just easy run like th uh, Tuesday. And then on th Thursday evening, we'll do either speed or like um, uh, like we did in, in the beginning, like pun fast punches or st stuff like this just to keep the nervous system firing. Even though we're a little bit tired, we still do this just to keep a good um, level throughout the weeks. So we don't, because it's a, the last session of, of the microcycle, we don't want to drop off and be have shitty techniques. We try to, in the beginning of the session, try to good, get good technique, crisp, just for the nervous system to remember how to move. Uh, after this, we do technical training, and not kata, but you know, just move, different punches, different kicks, very, 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 very basics. And after this, we do strength. We do strength training like in uh, a circle, uh, so the, the strengthening I do my, on my own, it's more intense, more uh, um, higher intensity, lower volume. The, the, this uh, on, on Thursdays is more like, not CrossFit, but you know, circle training. You do a station, a station, a station, a station, yeah. you know, yeah. different yeah, exercises. Yeah. And yes, um, that's that. It's pretty easy training. On Thursdays, we also do uh, conditioning of body. Uh, all the days we don't do any sparring, we do conditioning of body. You know, punches and kicks to each other pretty hard. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. not, it, it's not rocket science. Uh, then we have rest day on Friday. You rest, you don't do anything. You should do maximum 8,000 steps, 10,000 steps, not more. Then you're not resting. <laughs> uh, go to Saturday, but, on your rest day, do you work as well? Uh, on Saturdays. No, on Friday, because you're yeah, resting. Yeah, I work. Yes, I work. To work. Yes, I work Monday to Friday. Uh, every day I clock in 7, 7.15. I clock out 4, 4.30, something like this. So every day you have to work. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, so Saturday, uh, we do strength slash plyometrics for the uh, lower body. Like we, on Tuesday, we did the upper body. On Thursday, uh, on Saturdays, we do the lower body. And... 
I like to do all the plyometrics and all the strength uh, or this type on the beginning of, of the micro cycle. Uh, then we do the big mitts again, the body mitts with body armor. Uh, we do interval training. So for instance, today we did, I have it written up here. We did, we started with some combinations, three by two minutes, uh, different combinations. Some of them we did today now uh, just to warm up. And then we did 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, 10 times. And uh, we did this at uh, approximately 70 to 80% of our maximum 30 seconds capacity. So because it was such a large volume of, of, of sets, we decreased the intensity so that we can manage it. And we try to uh, maintain crisp technique uh, with good explosivity and good combinations. A lot of our, my students have a problem with they doing single techniques or single short combinations. I want them to train more com longer combinations and more movement. So we implemented this in the, in the interval training this week. Uh, and then uh, Saturdays, we also do some core uh, and we do some um, conditioning of the body. And then lastly, we do uh, your own techniques and your own stretching and stuff like this. And uh, the second session on Saturdays, it's uh, usually strength. Uh, strength on uh, Wednesdays is pretty easy because we have sparring and sparring is the most important of all our training. But on Saturday, the kids are downstairs now and they do strength training. We try to do it for maybe one and a half, two hours and a good rest in between sets uh, and high intensity, real strength training, maybe three to five repetitions of complex movements, squats, bench, deadlifts, cleans, snatches, stuff like this. Uh, on Sundays, uh, I do running. I do uh, long running. I try to do between 50 and 90 minutes minimum of running. This is to uh, increase my aerobic capacity. I do it slowly and I just go out to run in the morning. Between 15 and 20 kilometers, I try to do. This is just so that I can I improve my aerobic capacity. It's not fast. It's not something special. It's just moving the body for a long period of time. In the evening, uh, this is one of those trainings where we have younger kids and not just teenagers. So we start with uh, gymnastics and uh, mobility and, and games. So different you know, fun games for the kids to warm up. After this, we do sparring, light sparring, 60 to 80%. Uh, with the adequate rest in between so that we, we can keep a good uh, technique. Uh, yes, and um, we spend a maximum of 40 to 50 minutes sparring just so that we can have time for other things. In season, uh, Sundays are a special day for the people who train with the competition group for all the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Saturday, Sunday. They do easy training on Sundays. For the, for the younger kids who aren't training Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, the only training Wednesday and Sunday, they do hard trainings on Sunday. They do similar to what we do on, on, uh, on Saturday. So the big mitts conditioning work. Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty much what I do in a week, 10 sessions, approximately between two to three, four hours a day, every day on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I do a little less volume. It's more intensity. On Saturday, Sundays, I have more time to rest because I don't work and I can train a little bit harder or longer. Very, very, very good, good scheme. Very nice. <laughs> so, Love it. Uh, when I was younger, I, I was able to train uh, six times a week, uh, but then I now I turned twenty-five a few weeks ago, and you cannot train six times a week anymore. You have to have at least two, three days of rest. Sometimes I wake up, I feel like shit. I have to do. Uh, I only do easy running 20 minutes and then I come here and I, I just fake it, <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> for a while, an hour-ish. Just do some technique, light work, and then I sleep. So, uh, 25. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> I, it's, when you're 18 or 16 or 17, you can train like a madman. I have one kid mm -hmm. now, Oscar, his name is Oscar. He's, he's growing like a few centimeters each week, both this and around the arms and everything. Soon he'll be as big as me, you know, and he's a tiny boy. And, uh, just a year ago, I tell him, you, you have to train now. Use this time. It's like you're on uh, steroids. <laughs> you can train <laughs> how much you want and your body will just absorb it. And mm -hmm. so for all the teenagers out there, train hard. Don't go around partying, sleep, 
train. You, this is the best time of, of your life. Just train. Your body will just absorb all the training. And when you get to all this meat, you'll start <laughs> getting pain. So you cannot train hard all the time. And you have to start thinking about training. You don't have to think when you're a teenager. You just do. <laughs> just do, just do, just do. And you'll get really good really fast. And then by the time you're as old as Darren or Wesley, then you can chill. <laughs> <laughs> yes. In a few years' time, I will just go around with a beer belly and a suit on tournaments. That's it. I'll just shake people's hands. It will be perfect. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I say the same to people as well. What you put in between the, in, in your younger years will maintain you in your elder years. That's yeah. 100% true. If, if you're thinking you're going to turn your career... I mean, sometimes it happens. Don't get me wrong. But some, if you're thinking you're going to turn your career around in like 27 and oh, now's my years, forget it because you, you haven't put into your body what you, you should have done in your early years. You know, your stamina, your conditioning, your, your, you know, your strength training, all of that stuff comes from an early build up within your body. So that then when you, when you get to the 25 years of age that Jonas is moaning about at the moment, <laughs> you can then start using your body for other things. You know, you start learning more. You start thinking about things a bit more because as Jonas says, you know, there comes a point when, you know, just kicking the pad for hours on end <laughs> takes his hold a little bit on you. So, you, you know, you become a little bit smarter, a little bit, you know, you get your man strength at those kind of years. Yeah, but what you've put in in your early years are definitely going to maintain you. So please, please, please do not waste this time, as Jonas is saying. It's very, very important. Have fun, have, you know, go out, but put in what you, what you expect out later. In Sweden, we, they have a saying when I, when I went to university, I went to university in a pretty big, big city, uh, a university city. They have say that there is no... Um, Re-parties, they're only re-tests. You understand? You, you, you can fail a test, but you can never, you know, do the party once again. Saying, like, you, you should go out partying, you should not st study for the test. It's like a saying. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I tend to think it, of it the, the other way. You can get drunk when you're 80. You cannot win a world championship when you're 80. No. Okay? You can always, always have fun. Throughout your life, you cannot always win championships, okay? So if your goal is to win championships, yeah. you, you are going to be different than other people. You are going to lose friends. You are going to lose experiences that other people may have, but you're always also going to gain experiences that other people don't have. I, used to, I, I like to say that, for instance, Wesley and Darren, I, I consider both of these people my friends, and they live in different parts of the world. And uh, I know that if I come to Holland or I come to England, I can call these people and I have a place to stay. If you're fucking about when you're a teenager and partying, you have your friends in your hometown, but you won't have this. You won't have, like I can go to France, I can call someone, I can call Jean Paul. Hello, can I sleep at your house? No problem, come over, you can eat here. I can go to Lithuania, I can go to Romania, I can go to Russia, I can go to Japan. I have friends everywhere just because of this sport, okay? It's, it's, it's a different lifestyle and it's, it's a different, um, uh, yeah, different lifestyle, but it's, it's rewarding in its, own, it's in its own right, okay? So maybe you, you, you see that your friends are out, maybe going like Swedish teenagers, when they finish high school, they go to, to Thailand or something like this and party for six months. Uh, maybe you are staying at home and training, but when these people come back and they're trying to find a work and they try to, you know, come a normal life, the, the only thing they have is memories from bars in Thailand. They haven't been to Habarovsk in Russia, where it's eight hours, you know, domestic flight from Moscow to Habarovsk and uh, gone there to a world championship and seen the culture there and meeting the people there. They haven't been to, to Japan. They haven't been to, 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 to maybe... I don't know, some, some places that I've been and that I've experienced and I met people from these cultures and I met gained experience from these people. So I think it's both, both lifestyles have, to, have, to have its purposes and has its strengths, but you should really consider it not, not only doing what all your friends are doing. Try to go your own way. <laughs> you'll find value in that as well. Very so, true. I think, I think we've all been in that situation where Oh, you know, when I, when I was younger as well, my friends were like, oh, come out, come, come party. I'm like, no, sorry, I've got, I've got training in the morning. 
yeah, but you know, you train all the time. Yep, because I want to be successful. And yep, I want to go and win things. And yep, I want to look back in, in 20, 30 years' time and say, I, I utilized my sportsman's career in the way that I felt was best for me. Did I achieve everything I wanted to? No, probably no one ever does. You know, <laughs> that, that's just life. But did I do pretty well? Yeah. Did Jonas do pretty well? Yeah. Did Wesley do pretty well? Yeah. And that only comes through sacrifice in, 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 in what everybody else deems a normal life. This isn't a normal life, but it's a very, very educational and rewarding life. Because I tell you what, all you kids out there, one day you're going to turn around and go, I won this tournament. And then someone's going to go, you know what? I wasted 300 pounds going out on a big bender one weekend with my, with my friends. Now, what would you rather look back and say you achieved? I lost 300 pounds drinking beer or I won a major tournament somewhere doing something? Because there's only a few people in the world that can do what Jonas does. There's only a few people in the world that can do what Wesley does. You know, you can't, not everybody can be a world champion. Not everybody can be a European champion. Not everyone can be a national champion. It takes a special person to be able to achieve that. And to say you're one of them people is far better than wasting 300 pounds on beers. Take note from this man. He's 25, but he's got his own up already. And then if you think about it, lost, lost a lot of friends, but gained even more. And think about the Sayonaras people. The Sayonaras. <laughs> Oh, the shit. <laughs> Train hard, reward hard. I'm going to tell you, because if you drink, you don't drink for 16 weeks in your preparation. <laughs> you're up to your jeebers at that time. You're going to have a blast. Great times with great friends, with people you love, with, with people who love the same stupid thing you love. It's amazing. And, and, and I think this... This was this was this were some really really wise words. Thank you, thank you for sharing this with us, uh, Jonas. Because you truly are a wise man. You truly are a wise friend. And um, yeah, as you said, whenever to Holland, whenever to the UK, more than welcome to come and live with your friends. Do we want to spoil who the next guest is, Darren? Oh, I don't know. Do we do we want to put it out there? I, I, I think actually, Jonas has actually mentioned the location already. Maybe the person, <laughs> but maybe something more. But yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, we can put it out there. Uh, actually, Jonas, Jonas has already mentioned him. So uh, we've got uh, the famous JP coming on with us in February. Jean Paul, uh, he's a he's a great talent from France. Big, strong, athletic guy. <laughs> Nothing like myself. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we really look forward to that in, uh, in in February. We haven't set the date yet. We've just got to uh, work out which Saturdays we're going to be training on. But he will be with us next month and uh, another good talent for us to to utilize and steal some ideas off. Very he's cool. a great person as well. A great yeah, friend. Nice. Like, uh... and, and, and all them nerves that me and Jonas are thinking about in, in tournaments. And you see JP like this. On the edge of the mat. <laughs> yeah, he's like, uh, like he's got no worries at all about go going on and beating someone up. <laughs> Do we have time for a, for an anecdote about JP? Yeah, of course, we got time. Yeah, of course. Uh, so there's a tournament in in in, in, uh, in 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 I shouldn't say Holland. I should say the Netherlands, right? In uh, no, in, in, in 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 sneak in what what sport cup it's called? It's it's pretty big junior tournament and. It's, I, I like to compete there as a senior as well, just as I mentioned earlier, doing smaller tournaments and to, to build. What? The Waterport. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, I don't know. Yeah. We go there almost every year. It's people from Lithuania and everything. It's, it's good for the kids. Anyway, uh, so Jean-Paul, his coach and his team, they used to go there every year. And uh, I remember Jean-Paul was like an orange belt. This was maybe... 10 years ago, something like this, maybe more, maybe 12. And he competed in the, in the, in the adult category, category. And I remember that he, he fought some Lithuanian, big, you know, Lithuanians, they're big ass people. <laughs> <laughs> so they were, he fought in the heavyweight division and he, uh, I think he met a, Dutch, a Dutchman or something in the semifinals and he broke his hand. So he had a big, you know, wrap around his hand and he was like an orange belt or a blue belt, something like this. <laughs> and nobody knew about John Paul at, at this time. You know, he was he was a beginner, and uh, <laughs> he he went up in the final against I think it was Lithuanian, and he he, he fought with this Lithuanian, 
and he was, you know, you know, Sean Paul is, he, he doesn't back an inch, you know, he just fought and he had this cast on and he just fought with the other hand and he did elbows and knees and everything. He just went for it. And this Lithuania, he was like a black belt, you know, I've been around the block, you know, junior career, everything. And eventually, you know, it's Ikuake and it's Ikuake again. And this Lithuanian, his coach is like, what the fuck are you doing? You have to, you know, you have to win this fight. He's an orange belt or a blue belt. Just win, you know? So this Lithuanian in the last, he's like, oh, I, I, I don't have any stamina. I don't have any strength. I'll punch his hand. <laughs> so he has broken hand and the Lithuanian guy starts punching the hand. <laughs> and eventually JP, he, he falls down with the hand. Ah! And there's a Vazari, the Lithuanian. But I, I promise you, if he put his hand on it, behind his back, he would have won that fight. <laughs> <laughs> the Lithuanian didn't have a chance. <laughs> we will tell this. We will, we will start off the session uh, when it comes to your story. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> tell us about the break and broken hand. <laughs> yeah. How's your hand now, guys? <laughs> yeah. After, after, after this, I, I, I will never forget because, you know, JP, his, his friends, everything, they, they weren't famous, you know. They were just going to local tournaments. And then, you know, now you, you see it's all... In all the big tournaments, second place last year, last time in world championships and everything, his his career has gone up yeah. like, and uh, it's 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 really nice to see because he's such a nice guy. Like, yeah. you, you cannot say a bad word about this man, and I think you you really see it when he goes to tournaments. Also, everybody says hello to him. He, he knows everybody. Everybody has only good things to say about him. So, I think you will have a good session with him. He's a great human being and a great fighter. Thank you. So um, everybody uh, can now uh, unmute yourself. Uh, there has uh, a few people already left the building, but this was a very, very uh, uh, open Q and A you gave us, Jonas. Uh, a great session. Uh, it's some great words. So I think uh, a lot of people will leave this session with a nice, uh, with a nice feeling. And uh, we can't wait. We can't wait to 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 do this all in uh, in real life with you because uh, it truly has been amazing. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And it was really fun. I learned, as I said before, I learned a few things. So I will write them down and I will try to work on them. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Open the door. Thank you, Jonas. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the training. And I hope that hopefully this year we will see each other again. Yeah, my, my mother, she, al she already got the vaccine. So maybe, fingers crossed, we'll meet soon. Okay, we will. Hope to see you soon. Os. Take care, stay safe. Os, you too. Os. Thank you. Cheers, man. I'll see you guys. See you next week. Yeah. Bye bye. Excellent session. Bye bye. Thank you. Nice to meet Thank you. you. <laughs> Excellent session. Bye bye. Thank Always you. fantastic with Darren and Wesley. It's a pleasure training with you today, Jonas. I really enjoyed it. And, uh, the fact that you, know, you, you focus on basics and it's so important how things progress through. And like we've got the, the bendy boys over there with their legs and that. <laughs> it's so good that, you know, the basics that you work on is that foundation. And, you know, it's, it's a fantastic message that you give out to the kids as well to say, you know, you know, karate is karate, but it is a way of life for us all. So yeah. really, really a pleasure working with you today. So that's the one. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Hey guys, see you soon. Bye. 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 Thanks for coming. Bye. Mm -hmm. I think Frederick is going to say something oh. now. <laughs> yeah. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you so much, much guys. Here's my Take, care. Take care. Yeah, so Jonas, we have to draw past tax so much. Just, just having a Just having a English guys. In <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I was uh, just thanking him very much for a very nice uh, session. Great as always. Uh, Dude, Ted, uh, Ted, you're looking real old now. He's turning 19 now in March, so and he's about 93 kilos. So he's it's getting harder and harder for me at home. As you <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we're having fun. It was um it's lovely to see you again. Yeah, hope to see you soon, Fredrik. And you also Ted. Yeah, take care. And send my regards to Shian Peter. Os. Of Os. course, of course, sure. And um Darren Wesley, thank you so much for having this, making this happen. And I'll I'll see you soon yeah. again.
Enjoy your weekend, guys. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. So, it really was a, a great session. And uh, we have said uh, uh, to you, thank you a few times, my friend, but uh, it really was amazing. So, um, hopefully, hopefully we can see each other soon. And, um, you know, wh whenever you're stuck, because, well, Darren and myself, we both been in the situation that we didn't have a coach around. Um, so, always feel free. I know Russia has a lot of money to go there and, and to, to maybe maybe not always possible to go there. So always feel free to drop by in the UK or in, in, in Holland. Because uh, if we can help you out with anything, uh, we, we, we would be more than, than, than helpful to do so. So, um, yeah. yeah. That, Thank that you. Is Thank you. As well. awesome. Thank you very much. It was a truly a pleasure to, that you invited me. And I always feel so so strange when people call me, you know, Oh, he's done this. He's done that. It's for me. It's really strange, but uh, yeah, it's, it's but that's, a, that's a sign of good character, you know. Uh, you know, yeah, we're we're successful or whatever, but stay on the ground, just a normal person, you know. Oh, you want me to teach? It's a nice, yeah. it's a nice trait. Don't don't ever knock yourself uh, yeah. for that. Yeah, but uh, it, it, it's it's always fun, and you always learn something new, and it's always fun that so many people are want to tune in on a Saturday afternoon, you know, to watch me speak bad English. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's, it, it, it was a pleasure guys. And I hope we can do it again in the future, but more hopefully, I hope I, I will train with you live, you yeah. know, get yeah, to hug each other, you know, yeah, yeah. everything like this. It's this, this whole thing sucks. Really. It does. I usually, I, I travel 12 times a year and last year I traveled once and it was to Gothenburg, you know, by car, eight, 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 eight hours. So it's, you know, oh, I just want to, it to go back. We each other so many times a year, four or five times on tournaments, uh, go, yeah. go to.